Oh, Oi, Dan, have you finished the Saliki yet, mate? Yeah, <laughs> what have you done, Dan? What have you been doing? Oh, right, I will let you away with it then. You've been working hard, mate. So Dan's done all the floor and everything in here. Bit of a magician. Oh, we've got a good episode coming up. Stay tuned, check out what happens at this place. There's probably not a lot of things these guys can't do. Pretty awesome setup to see all this. So yeah, three inch ID carbon, 125 style wall. Made by Niapco in America. It's nice and nice and light. Oh, that's unreal. The critical speed is obviously increased because of the rotational mass and horsepower. I've got them in 2,000, 3,000 horsepower cars and haven't had one break yet, so. It's pretty unreal stuff. So what are some of the big advantages you know of? Uh, weight, weight is one thing. Obviously everybody these days is trying to knock the weight out of the vehicle. Um, obviously speed. Back in the day, we never used to rev engines past 6,500. Now we're going to 10, 11,000 RPM. So every tube has a, what they call a critical speed. Once it hits critical speed, the tube will start to turn to a spaghetti and then it'll explode. So steel, camoli, uh, really strong for horsepower, but the rotational mass is that high that when they do break, they take out floor pans, your feet, um, gearboxes, the whole lot. Safe point of view is, yeah, um, I know guys that race Pro Mod, Factory Extreme, um, they won't sit beside a Cremoli shaft anymore. So even though the Cremoli shaft is strong and we don't have failures, uh, if they do break, they're going to take out their legs. If these break, mate, they just turn into a big black bit of powder on the ground and, yeah. And we ring you guys and you just have to make us another yeah, we'll one. How another good? One. <laughs> Well, it's got to be 65 mil longer than this one because someone moved the motor further forward. So that's why we're going to this extent. All these parts and stock on the shelf, ready to go, just in case there's ever an issue at the drag strip. You can um, give Dan a ring on a Sunday morning. He loves coming down, opening up, so you can sell you some parts. Love it. So I think the first question people are going to be wondering, we've got these ends, we've got the carbon tube, now what actually holds the two together? Do we have to bang some self tappers in the side? What do we do? Uh, no, stay away from the, the screws. We're all about glue. So this little bit of glue, that's what's holding your old tail shaft together? That's it. You wouldn't, uh, wouldn't want to stick your fingers together with it, that's for sure. That's, uh, and that'll actually rip the carbon apart before it does break that bond with the tube. That's it's right. All, all done correctly. So pretty yeah. cool stuff, good system. Easier system than welding, you don't even need yeah, to weld it. Yeah, it is, and then there's a lot less heat transfer, there's a lot of everything else. So we built the jig um, behind the tube here to, to make it a lot bit easier. It keeps the tube phased while it dries. Um, obviously fully adjustable, pump together to press the ends. You'll see all that shortly. And so there's a three thou crush on the end here. Um, as you can see between this point and this point, there's an air gap. Uh, the glue gets injected into these holes here, comes in, fills the void, and bleeds all the air out of the top. So it's only this section here that is grabbed by the, the glue. No time to be doing the gardening, mate. <laughs> I've probably done 30, 30 or 40 of these. Um, never had a failure, and yeah, they're all in big cars. Pro mods, door slammers, um, street cars. We did one in Ben's, Tirana. Uh, it actually took out Outlaw Aspirator down at Drag Challenge. Um, so yeah, obviously same shaft as this, three inch tube. Uh, his is 900 horsepower, and we towed a trailer for 2,000 k's. So. So where do aluminium shafts sort of come into play, you reckon? Uh, so in my opinion, aluminium's in between steel and carbon. Um, rotational mass is light. Uh, they hold horsepower, but they don't have the, the weight of a carbon shaft, um, and they're still a metal. So once once they do break, they, they still do make a mess of, of steel floor pans and, and everything else. So you guys can make steel shafts? Yeah, steel shafts. Um, we keep in everything in stock. Three, three and a half inch steel, three, three and a half inch camoli. So next time we need a K-series crank balance, we've got the tools already made, eh? That's it.
Yeah, we, don't have it, we make it. Now tell me something, why have we got a K-series crank in here? What's, <laughs> what's the story? Well, we've, the K-series has got a bit of a soft spot in my heart as well. Um, currently building a Suzuki Sierra with a OK to go out and play with these boys. That's the go. So uh, how many horsepower on that? Um, we're going for the thousand of the wheels. If we need any more, we've got more, but it's all one that'll cover here. Oh. We're ready to, ready to go. Oh, I see what he's doing. He's jumped straight into the firings, clever boy. Yeah. Got a CNC ported A3 head. Uh, all super tech. For A valves, double springs. So when it comes to the cleaning stage, um, I can't get any big mitts inside the three inch tube, so Amy Moore, she uh, she steps in and takes over. Good job. So this is cleaning it, this is just preparing it before the so the glue's got something. That's right, yeah. So obviously we do everything in the engine room. Um, it's 22 degrees in here all year round. It's perfect conditions, there's no dust, there's no humidity. Um, yeah, cleanliness is the, the main thing that comes with it. If there's a bit of a bit of contamination in the tube or in the aluminium, then the glue won't stick, and, and that's when you'll hear that the ends spin. Um, we've never lost an end yet, so. So once everything's flamed, um, we do what they call a flame treatment. Uh, this will just get out the, the hydrocarbons out of the alloy, make sure there's nothing left on there. So we use the glue as a lube. Yeah. So when we put it together, it's got a, a nice smooth surface to... Right, so we throw that in here. And the tube will sit in. And we line the tube up, obviously with the center line, through the holes. The magic jig you were telling us about. I'll be it's proud of this too, mate. A couple little touches for good luck. Now we bolt this into the jig so that we know that nothing can move while it's here. I think we're the first ones that will be giving away the secrets. Whenever you see these in, um, <laughs> in the USA getting done, no one sort of shows you what happens or how they build them. Can you believe some parts out? Yeah, yeah that, that's it. Like grandma when she gives you recipes. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it's full of glue, obviously, when it starts coming out the top. And that to me looks free of air. There's no bubbles. Yeah, so we leave it eight hours in the jig, tightened up. Um, nothing can move. After that, we pull it out, assemble it with unis and a, a slip yoke, and put it in the balancer. Um, so there are a few, I guess, different ideas when it comes to balancing. Some people don't balance them because the rotation mass is so low, it may not affect the vehicle. Um, our motto here is nothing less really than perfect, so everything gets balanced. The, the supplier rates it for up to two and a half thousand horsepower. Um, I've got one like 125 thousand wall section in three and three and a half thousand horsepower cars. Um, I guess their claim to fame is that they've never had a tube fail. Um, yeah, if anybody out there does want a carbon shaft, uh, obviously Kamali, steel, aluminium, um, you can get in contact with us either by email, Facebook, or give us a call um, 07 3282 2114. Um, you can ask myself or the wife will grab all your details, fill out a form, and away we go. Um, we also do tube them up and box them, send them anywhere in the country. Um, we've got them up north. We just sent one down to down south into Melbourne. Foreman's engines, obviously as you can see, our Emerson here is our engine room. Uh, we've done our own cam doctors, spring testers. Um, so we, we do everything. We start from the, the bare block, bore home, balance, um, face, the whole lot. Oh, this is the bit I've been waiting for. So the old shaft, 19.4 pounds. Let's see how this uh, new carbon one weighs. What's your guess? Oh, I'm gonna say between 10 and 12. Yeah, I'm saying 10.5. Oh, 13.5. So we've saved us about six, key, six pounds. Yeah. 
that's not too bad. So none of the flex plates we've ever run, none of them have ever been balanced. So this time we're gonna make an adapter. Thanks to old Bill Hinshaw, we've got one of the old couplers we've had um, lying around and we're using that so we can balance these things in the future. The test rig's ready to go. Oh, looks good to me. So you reckon you can sharpen that up a bit? We'll get that into the blue. That's the story. Did we make any difference? Not really hard, but... Oh, look at that. How many revs is it good for? All of them. Eleven, Every single one of them. 11,000? <laughs> So it only needs one weight. Now if you guys want to see more of this type of video, let us know in the comments below. I can probably sneak into a few different businesses around the place that I know of. I'm sure they'll be glad if I come in there and spy on what they get up to. Let us know in the comments, give the video a like. Oh, it's going to be a question everyone's going to be asking once again. How do we um, put the weights on, mate? How do we hold them on? So we use the same glue that we use internal of the tube and we stick them on external. Oh, perfect. Thanks for letting us come and spy on you, mate. It's been a good, um, a good learning curve for me, probably for a lot of the guys watching this video too. Anytime. Well, that was interesting. Break it down.